All right, y'all, let's finish off today with a little bit of Beowulf Book 2. I'd like to remind you that we're going to be splitting Book 2 between two lessons. So notice that your study guide is not due until the end of Monday, April 26th. That's actually a day off of school for you guys, so that's more or less just overlap time if you need uh, some extra time to complete that one. I'm going to go ahead and open this up just so we can read the questions ahead of time. We'll see what we can answer today um, as we're reading, but the priority is to read as much as possible. I'd like to remind you, uh, you do have a media album, Beowulf Book 2 Pages. If you click into this, you can read uh, at your own pace. This is every page in order. So if you click on the first one and just start hitting next, you can cycle through and read this um, on your own as well. I'm going to be reading from Google Play Books. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me to teach from. I'm going to try to limit this video to like 15 to 18 minutes. So if we don't quite make it all the way through book two, that's okay. We'll uh, make up the rest and talk study guide in our next lesson. Let's actually take a look at what kinds of questions we should be uh, asking ourselves as we read book two, and then we'll get right into reading. So let's see, number one, what did Beowulf do with Grendel's severed arm? We might know that already from finishing book one, but we can see that um, as we begin book two. Number two, what did Grendel's mother do to avenge Grendel's death? Uh, what do Beowulf and Hrothgar decide to do about this? So a little two-part question right there, a little bit of plot summary. Number three, what item does Beowulf's rival Unferth give him before he dives into the lake? A little bit of reading comprehension. Number four, an art alert. Compare the dominant colors between the fight scenes in book two and book one. How are they different and what, what do they uh, highlight about Beowulf? That might be a question we have to look at in um, our next lesson. Number five, paraphrase the advice that Hrothgar gives to Beowulf on pages 68 and 69. Key word there is paraphrase. So Hrothgar is gonna say a lot. We wanna boil that down to the most important information. And the last one, number six, how is Beowulf treated when he returns to Geatland, where he's from, uh, just north of Denmark? There is a writing question as well. It specifically has to do with page 66. I think we're intentionally going to look at that one in our next lesson specifically, so we've got a little more time to discuss the writing. But we are going to be looking for the answers to these questions as we read today. Let's see how far we can make it in book two. Here we go, book two. Oh, uh, as we start book two, I just want to clarify, I am working on grading your book one study guides. Um, one thing you'll be able to do is look at the feedback that I give you on your book one study guide and try to improve on books two and three. Um, it'll take me a little bit to crank through book one study guides, but I hope to have those done by the end of this week. Book two. So did Beowulf accomplish that which he had promised, delivering the Hall of the Danes from the terror that had made it desolate. In token thereof, he hung up high on the gable of the roof, Grendel's severed arm. The tidings of the battle were soon heard abroad, and the chiefs of the Danes came from far and near to see the place and the signs of the battle. Glad of heart were they, as they tracked the monster's course, seeing it red with blood, till they came to the lake where he had hidden himself in his terror, knowing that his end was upon him. Then they rode back in great glee, and many sang of Beowulf's mighty deed. There is not on earth, so said they all, among warriors that bear the shield, a champion mightier or more worthy to rule. One thing I want to note with this, uh, in book one, we heard Beowulf brag that he is the, that there is no one under heaven stronger than he is. He's bragging that he's the strongest man on earth. He's proven that in defeating Grendel, and now you have people singing of his great strength. One thing to note is that Grendel is not dead yet. Beowulf ripped his arm off. He hung, he hung his arm from the roof of Hrothgar's hall. Uh, currently, uh, Grendel is slowly bleeding to death. He's bleeding out. So they, they've tracked his course. They found that, it, that he's hidden himself inside of, or under a lake. Grendel's currently dying. There's really nothing that can reverse that course. King Hrothgar gave to Beowulf many costly gifts. In great cheer, the warriors laid themselves down to sleep but there was one, one among them who was doomed to pay dearly for his rest. What's going on in the artwork here is interesting. You notice that, that uh, you see some people sinking down into the lake right here. There's a couple of things going on in this scene that are happening at the same time. Beowulf had mortally wounded his foe, but an avenger yet lived. Grendel's mother, a loathsome troll wife who dwelt deep below the waters of the moor, of savage and merciless temper was she, and now she was wrought to fury by the woe of her son. 
she crept stealthily to King Hrothgar's hall in the dark of night and burst in upon the warriors as they slept. Notice what, what Grendel's mother is doing right here. She reaches for one particular warrior. Ask not of pleasure. Pain is come again to the Danish folk. Dead is Ashera, my sage advisor and ally in council, shoulder comrade in the shock of battle. So what's going on in these side-by-side -side panels here, notice as, uh, as Hrothgar and Beowulf are mourning the loss of this man, it also shows, kind of like a movie camera jumping between scenes, it shows Grendel's mother dragging Ashera into her lair. He's already dead, it looks like, but she's uh, just continually dragging him down. Beowulf says, Be of good comfort, my lord king. Tis better for a man to avenge his friends than to spend his days lamenting. Verily, for every one of us there is an ordained end. Let us therefore take such occasion as God may give us of winning renown while life remains to us. Come then, let us go and track this foul creature to her lair. I think we can answer a study guide question, right? Number two, what did Grendel's mother do to avenge Grendel's death? She broke into the hall and dragged off uh, the king's advisor. What do Beowulf and Hrothgar decide to do about this? They decide to track her back to her lair. They are going to hunt her down. You may want to type your own answer for this question in complete sentences right here, just while we're paused. We'll continue in just a moment here. Notice, too, we didn't quite answer number one by itself, but you should be able to get that as well because we talked about it just a moment ago. Please uh, answer these in complete sentences. Feel free to pause this video as much as you need. We'll continue in just a few seconds. There is a certain lake, not many miles from this hall. All about it are woods, whose great roots go down to the water. By night is a wonder weird to see, fire on the waters, and no man knows how deep the lake may be. It is a fearful place. The stag, however sorely the hounds may have pressed him in the hunt, would sooner die than plunge his head into the water. That paragraph is kind of written in a fancy manner. It's basically saying that this land, this area, is cursed. It is an evil place. There the tide washes in and sprays the forest with its brine. Clouds shroud the waters and wet winds wail through the trees. You alone might brave those depths in search of just notice what's going on in the artwork on this page, just to further verify not only how evil of a place this is, but also how powerful Beowulf is. Notice all these sea monsters that are kind of raging out of the lake. There's this giant dinosaur looking one that Beowulf shoots through the head. They show him, they show him drawing his bow. There's a twang as he shoots his arrow. And then Beowulf jumps into the lake. I hope this gets you thinking about a moment from book one, where Beowulf's telling his story about uh, how he swam in the ocean for seven days. We're going to see some of that supernatural, superhuman uh, swimming ability here, too, as he swims to the bottom of this cursed lake. Then Beowulf donned his gear of war, helm and breastplate hardy, and lastly he took up the sword Unferth vouchsafed him. Vouchsafed means to, to give for safekeeping. I think this is another study guide question for you. Hunting, it was named, an ancient heirloom, its blade with battle blood hardened and keen. So notice his rival Unferth does give him a sword. Um, it should be noted, right? Even though Unferth may not like Beowulf very much, he still wants Grendel's mother dead and, and is trying to help in this fight as well. Beowulf says, with hunting I seek doom of glory or death shall take me. And he jumps into the lake and dives down. Maybe a little hidden detail right here. Note, did any of you notice Grendel's mother right here, just kind of peeking up as well? Notice that she's very Grendel-like in appearance. She's actually more dangerous than Grendel was. You can also see those, I like the little detail, the runes and the design on hunting. The legendary sword is right there too. Art alert, this one's not one of your, um, this one's not one of your study guide questions, but notice the detail put in the character's eyes once again. You can see the detail put into Grendel's mother's eyes as she grabs Beowulf and drags him into her cave. Uh, this is a fight scene right here. I think we should be able, looks like we'll be able to finish reading through this book, but we'll take another look at study guide questions in our next lesson. This is a good time to remind you of question, we looked at three, question four, compare the dominant colors between the fight scenes in book two and book one. 
How are they different? What do they highlight about Beowulf? Maybe for now, just keep an eye out for the color that appears the most in this fight scene here as I summarize it for you. So Beowulf takes in a deep breath as he's dragged into her lair, and the fight begins. Grendel's mother tries to bite through his helmet. Doesn't work. They're grappling, grappling. Beowulf gives a mighty wang with the sword that, uh, that Unferth gave to him. Looks like it doesn't do much to Grendel's mother's head right there. They're grappling, they're wrestling. Notice the colors once again. Pick out what you think the dominant color is. Notice here Grendel's mother grabs a weapon as well behind her back. Unlike Grendel, she does use weapons in this fight as well. She manages to get a little stab in on Beowulf as he bends her hand back from there. And look at this, she makes him bleed. She's already proven herself more powerful than Grendel. A big knee to the knee to the head right there does make Beowulf bleed through the mouth. Notice that she is stronger than her son. Love the detail in Beowulf's eyes right here. He realizes, oh wait, I'm actually in danger. She can actually hurt me. You can see that in his eyes right there. She lands a couple more hits. One detail that I that I missed a couple of pages ago. Notice right here that hunting didn't do anything to to Grendel's mother. And her head actually dented the sword right there. Shows how powerful she is once again as well. This page can be difficult to read. So panels wise, just follow my cursor. They're grappling. Beowulf lands a hit, a couple hits. Grendel's mother lands a kick as well against the wall. What does Beowulf notice on the wall? but a gigantic sword right here, inscribed with lots and lots of runes. He dodges another hit, grabs this thing off the wall. He's strong enough to wield it. Notice the terror in her eyes, the eyes detail once again, and whack. This sword can damage her right in the back of the head. Detail in the eyes once again. What else does Beowulf notice after, after scoring that lethal hit on, on, Beowulf, or on Grendel's mother? He notices Grendel bleeding out in the corner. Terror in his eyes as well. Takes the same sword and swack. There goes Grendel's head. He is done as well. The battle is won. Notice that, that uh, Grendel's uh, blood and Grendel's mother's blood was hot enough to melt the sword as well. Another one of their powers, I suppose. He takes what's left of the sword and Grendel's head. And he's heading back up. This is a page that I've never really looked at uh, in depth before, but notice the looks on people's faces, right? This pool is teeming with blood now. They're probably thinking that Beowulf has been, has been hurt or killed. You can see the sadness in their eyes. And then, surprise, rising up out of the water is Beowulf, sword in hand, Grendel's head in his teeth right there. Uh, your writing prompt for, uh, in your study guide is based on this page. We'll talk about that more in our next lesson. We'll go a little bit further. Actually, I'm thinking we should be able to finish the reading within this video, and then we'll look at the rest of the study guide questions in our next one. Just like they, hung, just like they did with Grendel's arm in, in the hall, they're now, uh, dec they're now using his head as a decoration too. Welcome to Viking culture. Beowulf soon delivered to Hrothgar the hilt of the giant sword and the severed head of Grendel. The king rejoiced, and all looked with awe upon the trophies. Then Hrothgar counseled the hero. This is the advice that your study guide is asking about. Friend, thy, th thy fame is spread abroad throughout the world, but thou bearest it modestly and discreetly. Behave thyself so, and thou shalt be a comfort to thy people and thy lords. Not so did Haramod. He was king of Denmark before the days of Shild. For he did he not slay the chiefs, his comrades, at the feast? Did he not wander away alone from all companionship of man? God had given him strength and power beyond all other men, but he used them so ill that there was none who loved or honored him. He's warning Beowulf not to become too arrogant or too greedy um, because of his power, because of his great deeds. Take warning by him, O Beowulf. Wondrous it seems when Almighty God gives a man fortune and fame and a wide dominion power over great parts of the earth, an empire so ample that he can comprehend no end to it. But ever it comes that the frame of the body fragile yields, 
faded falls, and there follows another who joyously the jewels divides, the royal riches, and cares not for his predecessor. Take thou, therefore, good heed, O Beowulf, against pride and arrogance. Choose the better path. Profit eternal. Think eternal life, think heaven. Now indeed, thou art in the pride of thy strength and the power of thy youth. But there will come a surety, sooner or later, either sickness, either sickness or the sword, fire shall consume thee or the flood swallow thee up. Be it bite of blade or brandished spear or odious age or the eyes clear beam grown dull and leaden. Come in what shape it may, death will subdue even thee, thou hero of war. Then the king gave him jewels from his store, and after this he threw his arms about the young man's neck, weeping the while, for he knew in his heart that he should see his face no more in Daneland. So Beowulf and his comrades rode down to the shore. Beowulf gave to the warden of the boat a sword bound with gold. High place did the man hold thenceforth among his fellows by reason of this gift. Then the Geats embarked on their ship and set sail. That's about as far as I want to go today. There's just a couple pages left in book two, um, but we'll take a look at those in our next lesson as we take a look at study guide questions as well. Um, you may want to take some time to, to answer the questions that you can today, and we'll take another look at them in our next lesson.